Good evening from um, California. Um, so this is kind of the second part of uh, what I wanted to talk about. So last time I talked about uh, living in the past and why people do that and um, how it affects you. Um, so I guess to summarize, um, we talked about how the mind attaches significance to events. So events are just things that happen and your mind attaches significance to them based on its experiences of the past. Um, so your mind is conditioned by everything really, like your social <clears throat> upbringing, which country you live in, whether you're a male or female, um, schooling, parents, things you like, things you don't like, experiences of good and bad, everything goes into conditioning your mind about how you interpret um, events around you in the present moment. And if you are not conscious about your um, how you perceive things, um, you can become trapped in the past, essentially because everything that goes on right now that you perceive around you is conditioned by or is um, perceived by conditioning from the past to such an extent as it warps your perception of now to the fact that you're essentially just living a nightmare based on your past, um, which can be quite debilitating for some people. Um, so that's kind of what we talk, talked about last time, excuse me. Um, and I've got some great comments, so some people um, reached out to me directly, um, which was great. So thank you, I um, appreciate that. So this evening I wanted to talk about kind of the opposite of that, or kind of the other side of that coin, which is what happens when you refuse to accept your current situation, your life situation right now. Um, what happens is you tend to wish for things in the future. And your mind starts to travel into the future and you start wanting something else. You're thinking that the future will somehow bring you satisfaction or bring you something um, better than what you have right now. And this is essentially living in the future. Um, now the future is nothing more than a figment of your imagination. Um, you know, the mind's like an amazing tool. It's what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom. Um, you know, it gives us the ability of abstract thought, um, problem solving, and all sorts of amazing things. But I also believe it's kind of the curse of uh, the human condition. Um, you know, it's like a, a garden. If, you're, if you don't tend the garden, if you don't tend your inner space, your inner garden, your mind, if you don't weed out things that you don't need, things which are wasteful, and you don't bring in nourishment, your mind will run rampant and take control. Um, so <clears throat> coming back to the point, if you refuse to accept where you are now and continually want something better, you're living in the future. You're not accepting now. You're not, to you now is not good enough for some reason. Um, and this, I've seen this happen, a lot of people, kind of a common thing I think I've seen um, is when people change jobs every year, two years, less than a year, three jobs in three years. And what they're looking for is something else. They can't accept the fact that the current job they're in, for example, isn't giving them what they want. Yeah, they, there's an excuse that well, the environment's not right, or the people I work with aren't right, or I don't get the support I need, or something, something, something. I need to find another job because I'm not appreciated, and that's going to solve my problems. Um, hey, Danny. Um, and that, um, that's not true. So fundamentally, you, you're constantly searching for something because you perceive right now to be 
not not a good place to be. Um, and what happens when you do that is the future never actually arrives. This is what I found out for myself. You keep on wishing for the future and some small part of it might sort of happen. And you get a little kind of inkling of, oh, okay, here, here's something I've, I've, I've been wanting, but it's not good enough. So you look to the future and you keep on looking to the future and you're never satisfied. You're fundamentally refusing to accept that what you have now is your situation and you're not dealing with it. Um, what this also tends to do is to bring sort of uh, like worry and anxiety. Um, you know, you, you, you fear and worry that you'll never be good enough. You're always striving for something that you can't get to. Um, this is the sort of thing that keeps you awake at night. Um, and it's all, well, to some people it's completely, um, it dominates their lives to the point that they really can't operate, they can't make decisions, they can't see the good in their life, they can't see the abundance they have around them. Um, they're so completely clouded by this idea that where they are right now is fundamentally not good or not good enough. Um, and if, if you have this, um, and it's really quite common, um, you know, reach out, get in touch, because this is something I, I can help you work through. Um, now, something else which kind of related to this um, is people fundamentally believing they don't have a purpose, or they'll say, I haven't got a purpose, or I don't know what my, my purpose is. Like, so and so has a purpose, but I, I don't have, what is my purpose? Um, and again, this is something I went through. I spent years trying to figure out well, what is my purpose. I need something really big to be my purpose. Uh, and that's, that's again, a, a kind of a twist on the same sort of thing here. You're, you're fundamentally believing that where you are right now is not good enough, that your purpose isn't big enough. Um, our purpose, I'm probably actually going to do another sort of more in-depth discussion about purpose. I'll probably say some of my thoughts for that, but your purpose doesn't have to be ending uh, third world debt or curing world hunger or finding a cure for AIDS or, you know, all these big things. People are, some people who are doing that, that is their purpose, but they're not, they're not, they haven't, they're set to where they are and they're moving forward because they have like this guiding light to take them in a certain direction. The purpose right now, I fundamentally believe that a purpose really is to serve others. I think most, well, I think all humans, if you're of sane mind, have the same purpose, which is to serve others. Um, which means you're probably doing that right now. You're probably doing that right now. You could be a parent, you could be a friend. You know, imagine a casual smile to somebody in the street might be what they need that moment in time to sell, give them um, some sort of salvation from whatever they're going through. That could be your purpose, and you don't know it. Um, but like I said, I'm going to come back to more about that in, in the next uh, talk that, we, that, I, that I come up with. What I wanted to kind of wrap up here with is, is saying that living the past, living the future, fundamentally what the point is, is that your relation to this present moment where you are now, and how you decide to live this moment, which is where life happens, is a reflection of your relation to life, your relationship to life. How do you, how do you approach life? Do you live right now in this moment, or do you perceive right now conditioned on all the stuff in the past, or do you constantly look to the future because you think now it's not good enough? So how, how do you relate to your life right now? And if you find that you I'm not getting the most satisfaction out of what is going on right now, then let me know and we can talk about that. Um, I've got my note that side, that side, link up there. So um, check out the website, you can book a call, we can have a conversation about, um, about you and about what I can offer. 
and I look forward to hearing from you. I'll catch you soon. Bye.